think we'll just take the the spiders all the way up. Fighting these enemies down there doesn't seem to serve any particular purpose anyway. Oh, crap. Oh yeah, I remember this part. <clears throat> So you really have to uh, use the time stop here. Otherwise it will just push you over the edge. Check it out, Ami. The Emperor is directly, directly below us. It's like the Royal Oaf's mouth is just begging us to dive on in. Yeah. Are we inside the Emperor's body now? Wow, Ami. You're one fearless wolf. This should be the fastest way to get to the root of the problem. Hey, what's this funny looking thing here? Oh, I know. It's that dangly thing that hangs down in the back of the throat. I bet if we tickled it, this royal oaf would sneeze. That's probably our best bet for getting out of here. But let's save that for later. We're going the other way now. This really reminds me of... Um, uh, that that fish dungeon in Ocarina of Time. Ah, uh, yeah. I should have been freaked out by that place when I was younger, but uh, uh, I guess it just didn't think about it. Because it is pretty creepy that you have to dive into the mouth of a fi giant fish, but... Uh. Ah, a golden gate, which means we probably will have a boss fight pretty soon. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Insane. 
That mist, it's alive, Ermi. Oh yeah, this guy. Under my control, this body breeds evil mist over the city. And you, Mutt, you dare attempt to clear the skies of my poison? Waging battle with me inside a human body would be no easy task. Even now, Goldnail, the mighty sword cries out for your blood. Come! Step forward so that I, the indomitable blight, may cut you down. <laughs> I'll step forward all right. You're a real piece of work, blight. Better say your prayers. You uncultured wretch! Be warned, we are in the very bowels of the Emperor. If we fight here, his body will not... Give me a break. A little action here will help him wake up. But never mind that. You're the one behind that poison mist. Possessing a human body may be an elaborate trick, but it ends now. With my supreme lady, then Kumaru, I, the magnificent Isen, shall rend that hunk of junk you call a sword. Or not. Yeah, this is. This shouldn't be too hard though, because you just have to use the time pop stop power and that's it. Oh. Back the sword. <clears throat> oh, I guess you don't really need the. Yeah, you don't really need the time stop there. I think. Whoa. And you can't attack him when he's doing that. Oh yeah. Well, I can't really tell what he's supposed to do, so I, I need to use the time power just to be on the safe... Just to be on the safe side. Okay, so then he dashes forward, which leaves him vulnerable, and then you can just attack the sword. Okay. So it's a typical... It's like a typical Zelda fight. You just defeat the bosses with your newly acquired power, and that should be it. Oh. Oh. I forgot to use the brush power. Yeah, I still think you need to use it even if he doesn't use the attack where he is left vulnerable. Well, vulnerable. Alright. Oh, I can't pronounce it. Just use the time stop, and you should be good to go.
Yeah, as soon as he starts taking that stance when he... Well, I don't know what to call it. But that sword stance. When he's used to power. They have to use it before he does it, though. I don't know, this fight very much reminds me of the Virgil fights in DMC3 for some reason. But I'm pretty sure that this game came out before DMC, if I remember correctly. Maybe it's just that they have similar moves. I mean, yeah, the, the spinning swords, they're... Oh, we have we get another bead, right? The spinning swords are pretty much like Virgil's own sword attacks, or his ranged attacks. And, yeah, they're... The similarities are just uncanny. Blight, a disease residing within the Emperor's body and born of the intense hatred and evil of the cursed sword Goldnail, was the source of the acrid mist that had plagued this capital citizenry. But even a creature so despicable and full of hatred was no match for our intrepid heroes. Amateras and Essen. Blight's defeat brought with it a lifting of the acrid fog. The Emperor, now freed of evil's influence, returned to normal. Amateras and the others had earned a brief moment of respite. However, evil conspired to cut the tranquil scene short. From Gold Nail's defeated form rose the familiar blackness. The spirit of evil and hatred that had resided within the sword, black as midnight and deep as the sea, rose slowly skyward. Make no mistake, this was undoubtedly one of the foul spirits that dispersed from Orochi's broken body. Quickly and steadily it rose. Then it shot off towards the distant sea and over the horizon. It moved with purpose, as if to a rendezvous with a lost friend. Amateras and the others had no time to rest. If they were truly to restore the capital to its normal routine, they still had to deal with the threat of the water dragon. This tale is far from over. <laughs> <laughs> 